All right, guys, let's check out another Fortis. This time, Flieger Chronograph, the F43 Bicompacts. So we have two sub-registers on this thing and a little bit of dust. We'll go ahead and clean that off. Let's get into it. So I measure this thing at 42 and a half millimeter wide, 54.5 lug to lug. It is a, a long lug to lug. Also a little bit on the thicker side at 16.3 millimeter sapphire crystal up top, but this metal bi-directional 24 click 12 hour bezel sits proud of it. The lug width an odd 21 millimeter, but you're gonna wear this thing on the bracelet, I guarantee it. The crown, 7.6 millimeter oversized screw down, should have 200 meter water resist or higher. I didn't write it down, does it say on the case back? Yeah, 200, so it's 20 at most. And the weight, it is a beast. Sized up from my wrist, it weighs in at 224 gram. It is not a lightweight watch, but it balances out pretty dang good with that long lug to lug. Retail price, $3,650. Movement inside. They call it the UW51. It is basically the Salida SW510. Chronograph automatic with the date. I have the date set up for 13. Why? because it's also in that crazy orange, which shows up with UV light like the rest of it. All the other date numbers are gonna be in white. So let's go ahead and start this chronograph so we can check out that smooth sweep of the chronograph hand in that bold orange color. We'll also zoom in a little bit so we can take a closer look at the registers here. I'll put a link down below. Ford has sent this in directly. So they had a little funny little thing on there about the register because this one's basically just a running seconds this one keeps track of your minutes and then obviously this is going to be your seconds so where's the hour register you don't need it they had a little funny little saying in their uh, description of this they said listen if we're tracking your hours then probably you're too slow but I know there's other reasons to track hours on a chronograph but I thought it was kind of funny that they actually put that in their comments also if you look at the loom around the edges here at their indexes, you can see they're like almost, you know, like printed out. So they are, they're special. They're very thick, they're very bright, and they just look cool with that awesome green colorway in the daytime. Nice blacked out handset. The hour and minute hand also is gonna have really good loom, but there is no loom on that orange chronograph hand. That is all gonna be lit up with UV. Again, on the Fortis website, it'll show you that. So you can look at it during the day. They'll have a night shot, and then they have a UV shot. So if you're in an area where maybe you're clubbing it or something, and you're somewhere where there's UV lights, I'm sure there's other places where UV lights are used, but um, it just pops. The orange really pops out. It's pretty cool. So if we stop this guy, and then we reset it, it just snaps right back and lines up. Amazing bezel action on this 24 click. It stops and locks in perfectly. There's zero play, zero backlash, or anything like that. It just snaps in and it's consistent in both directions. Completely brushed case. You can see you have that black relief there. I still don't have confirmation of what that material is. I don't think it's ceramic, but it'll also be on uh, in between the crown and the case. And this seems like it's on every watch. And then the chronograph pushers, you can see they have a nice little texture to them and they're concaved. So you have plenty of traction on those as well. Here's a look at the case back. Some good information there if you're interested and even some German, I believe. The clasp on this is the same clasp that you're gonna see on all of their metal bracelets. Simple fold over, double pusher, double pronged. And then you have that quick on the fly push button adjust. All right, let's pop this on my seven and a quarter inch wrist so you can see what that looks like. Like I said, it's a big boy watch, but it balances out really good. I wear it a little bit snug. That way it doesn't flop around. It doesn't feel that top heavy. You can tell there's a little bit of top heaviness to it but the bracelet and the clasp really balance it out if you wear it at the appropriate size. All right, let's kill the lights, check the loom, and then we'll also shine a little UV on it so you can see that orange. So there's the loom, great loom, and then here is that UV. You can see how that orange just pops. Just 
just a fun little feature. And I'm just now noticing that they actually, you can't really see it until you uh, really shine the UV light on there, but they actually ringed out that subdial to the right over there at the three o'clock and the orange as well. I didn't notice that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next vid.